want to give thanks for Jesus. We thank you for his life, his death, and the resurrection, all of which brings us something new. Thank you, Jesus, for your love, life, showing us a better way. Help us to grow and be more like you. That would in a world perspective, most of us in this room are very rich. Help us to remember that, Lord, and to be thankful and to be generous. As we look back, we also think of oh, friends and loved ones we have lost. We pray for our brothers and sisters in our community who are saddened by loss. Be close to them and also to those who struggle with the hardship of life. Give us your peace. We are grateful and excited about the many children who are born into our community, bringing new life and new joy. Guide them by your spirit, your gentle spirit. Peter says, refuse Jesus to wash his feet, and he says, uh, no, you cannot wash my feet. That was a servant or a, a, an inferior person in authority doing something for a superior, or maybe a, a, host, a host asking their servant to do that for their, for their guests. But it couldn't be the leader, the rabbi, uh, washing the disciples' feet. But Jesus said to Peter, um, let me see how I read this as it stands, unless I wash you, you have no part in you. That was the first thing Jesus said. The second thing he said, um, as Peter was suddenly became enthusiastic, he said, if it is about being, having a part in you, then wash all of it. Wash, wash, wash my face, wash my hands. And Jesus said, oh, no, 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 it's not necessary, because uh, those who are clean and, and wash themselves, they are clean. I just wash your feet. And he says it this way, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. The whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. And suddenly Jesus brings a little symbolism into what he's saying, referring to Judas, who was not clean in his thinking, and he was planning to betray Jesus. And uh, from this, uh, many has called uh, the feet washing a little uh, baptism sort of routine. But, uh, I'm not sure that what Jesus was talking about. Then the last thing is probably the main lesson of the story. And he says, Jesus, as uh, the third thing he says, is, do you understand what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and your teacher, has washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. And this is from this commandment that we have as we follow this practice. Let me, let me take your thoughts back to a little bit to the first point of this thing. Unless I wash you, you have no part in me. You know, I think um, feet washing, as we do it together, can be something that brings us together and makes <laughs> us have a part in each other. And um, therefore, I'd like to give you a little task as we go to the ceremony. As you bow down to wash another person's feet, ask the simple question, is there something in your life that I can pray for? Is there something in your life that I can pray for? It could be a, for those of you when you answer, it could be about your family, your children, your parents, your studies, your job, your whatever. But is there anything in, in your life I can pray for? And there is something very beautiful about us praying for each other by name and asking God's blessings on each other in words, two people uh, together. And um, God is there, God hears our prayers, and in, together we enter before Him and He will bless what we are doing. So I encourage you to do that when we go to the feet washing. To, to ask a simple question and then pray specifically for each other of, of a need. Maybe that will also open our lives a little bit to each other and we can be part of each other, as Jesus says also about Peter.
No, uh, the practical part of it is uh, this way. Um, we have uh, four different places where we can meet and wash each other's feet. There is an area for couples who want to do it together in the, in the cafeteria area. Then the, the men will go... Uh, 
uh, we raised over 3,400 3, pounds, but uh, we will definitely need more money in the future. There is a give by text option that I will tell you a bit more um, when we collect the offering. I'd like to invite you to stand up as we continue our worship today and let us sing hymn number 403. Let us break bread together.
that would follow. And so, lo and behold, within next to no time, this uh, great multitude starts to congregate around Jesus and his disciples. You see, wherever Jesus went, people wanted to be blessed by Jesus. Uh, they wanted to be healed by Jesus. And so there's this great multitude that has gathered on the mountainside and Jesus begins to do what Jesus does best. He begins to preach and to teach and to heal and to bless and he's doing this for the majority of the day and then it kind of Jesus notices that he's been giving them this spiritual food for uh, a little while and, and now they may be becoming a little bit hungry and so Jesus says to uh, one of his disciples Philip he says listen Philip uh, we need to feed the brethren uh, please uh, give them some food and, and I can just imagine that Philip is uh, kind of thinking to himself, um, Jesus, my brother, uh, in order for me to feed this multitude, it, it, it would cost eight months' wages. Uh, uh, Jesus, you're not paying me that type of bread. Uh, I, I can't do this. I can't uh, feed them. And, and then this disciple, Andrew, good disciple, great name comes to Jesus and, and he says, listen, Jesus, uh, there's this guy and he has five barley loaves and two fishes. And, and what Jesus then does is, Jesus feeds the entire multitude from this small packed lunch. Now understand the text just says that it's 5,000 men, uh, uh, but that doesn't include women and children. And if we look at the Adventist church, uh, if we're going on that type of ratio, we really don't know how many people are there. And, and, and so Jesus has fed this entire multitude of five loaves and two fishes. Now this was homemade bread. I tried to dabble in making bread myself. And you know, sometimes uh, the, you may put a little bit too much salt or not enough yeast and, and sometimes it, it, it may go wrong but in, in this time when Jesus multiplied it I'm, I'm sure all of the equations all the fractions of, of ingredients just came together perfectly and, and this was a good meal yes. and not only was it a good meal it was free free food I don't know about you, but when they're giving out free food, I often take maybe a, a second helping. And, and if the time is right, maybe I'll go and pull out a, 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 a rack of foil from the car and, and wrap something up to take home because, uh, you know, you want something in the morning. And so I'm sure the multitude really, they did all of this and understand once they've done all of this, there's still 12 baskets left over. So they have feasts. They had a good time. Uh, so much so that they're saying, listen, we need to make this guy king. Uh, we, he needs to be ruler over all of us. And, and Jesus understands this and kind of slips away and he sends his disciples over the other side. The multitude disperses. And Jesus had some alone time with his father to, to commune. But uh, it, it, the text goes on to talk about how Jesus wanted to go and meet up with his disciples. And so uh, instead of taking a boat, he said, listen, let me just walk across the sea. You see, when you're Jesus, when you're the son of God, these are the things you can do. And so Jesus 
Jesus uh, walks across the sea and the disciples see him and they're a little bit scared, you know the story. And so they go over to the other side. Now the interesting thing is, is this, is the multitude wakes up in the morning. Still thinking about, man, that was a good munch that Jesus gave us yesterday. That was so, and so they start to look for Jesus. They, they realize that Jesus didn't go over the other side with his disciples. And, and so they notice that the boats, uh, there's still nine boats here. Uh, there was ten yesterday, the disciples got in one. So Jesus must still be here. They're looking all over for Jesus. And they can't find him. And so they say to themselves, but maybe he went over to the other side. Maybe the disciples may have come back over and got him. But so let's go in our own boats over to the other side. And so they get in their boats and they go over to the other side. And they meet up with Jesus in verse 25 of chapter 6. And, and, and they say to Jesus, Jesus, where, where have you been? Uh, wh when did you get here, Jesus? We, we, we've been looking for you. Uh, where, 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 when did you manage to get over here? And Jesus responds to them and says this. He said, listen, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs that I performed, not because you heard the message that I preached, not because you saw the miracles, but because of the loaves and you had your field. You see, these guys had an encounter with Jesus. They uh, met the, the, the Lord and Savior and they saw the miracles, but they missed the whole point because they were interested only in food. It was all about the bread. And here's my New Year's message to you. Here's the first sermon, the, the, the power message that I want to leave with you. Uh, throughout this year, when you're seeking Christ, don't seek him for the things that you can get materialistically. It's not about what God can do for you. The most important thing is having a relationship with Christ. These guys had a, a, an experience with Jesus. They saw miracles. But the most important thing that stuck in their memory was the good food. The things that could be done for them, the material possessions. And, and I, I, I want to say that as we go throughout this year, let us uh, make the effort to make Jesus a priority in our lives. <coughs> Jesus says to them, why are you working? Why are you searching for this food that spoils? This food is going to spoil. I gave you a food yesterday, but where is it? It spoils. You need to be uh, searching for the Son of Man who will give you eternal life. Really? Oh, oh, oh yes, please, uh, uh, give us some of this. Uh, how, how can we, what is this or work that require, is required? And, and Jesus says, listen, all you need to do is believe in the one that he has sent. Jewish tradition kind of told them that when the Messiah come, uh, like Jeremiah had said, that the, the manna would be rained down again like the days of, of, of Moses. And, and so here the, the, these, these Jews, they say, uh, but we saw the signs that our forefathers had. Uh, 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 so where is uh, the signs uh, that, that, uh, uh, that this Messiah is going to have? Uh, uh, is he going to rain down manna from heaven as well for us to eat? Still thinking about food. And Jesus says to them, listen, it wasn't Moses that gave the Israelites this manna. It was God that rained down this bread. But I tell you that there is true bread that come down from heaven. And if you eat this bread, you will never die. Ooh. Give us some of this bread, please. Uh, give us some of this bread that we may eat of it. And Jesus starts to say, listen. I am this bread. I am this bread. If you eat me, you will live forever. Um, is, is this not Jesus, Joseph's son from, from Nazareth? Uh, <coughs> you were born in Bethlehem, we, you know who you are. Because they, they, they still haven't grasped what Jesus is trying to say. And so Jesus really has to break it down to them and, and he, he starts to say, listen, 
No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise them up in the last day. It is written in the prophets. They will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father has learned from him and come to me. For no one has seen the Father except the one who is from God only. He has seen the Father. And here comes our scripture text. Verily, verily, I say to you, the one who believes in me, if you had sought after me, like you sought after this physical food, if you seek after me, if you believe in me, Jesus Christ, you will have eternal life. Your forefathers, they had manna. And where are they? They're dead. But if you uh, feast on me, if you feast on the bread of my flesh, you will have eternal life. As we come to the communion table today, and I want to invite the deacons to come and undress the table. As we come to the communion table today and, and we uh, take the bread symbolically, which represents Christ's flesh. It's so perfect that we're taking this on the first Sabbath of the year. That we can say yes, we're going to recommit ourselves to Christ. <laughs> On this first Sabbath, we're going to recommit and we're going to dedicate and say, listen, uh, this is the bread that I want. Oh, everything else, all that material bread, the, 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 the stuff, it, it means nothing. It all spoils. But this bread, which represents your broken body that you died for us on Calvary's cross, if we eat of this bread, which means if we believe in Jesus, we will have it eternal life. Before we go on to the communion service together, we'd like to thank Jesus for what he did for us. And uh, we will have two short prayers thinking of the meaning of the bread and the wine. Let's pray together. <laughs> Dear Jesus, thank you that in you we can have inter eternal life, eternal in time, also internal in meaning and breadth. The real life which comes in you. You also said that. Um, Man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the, the mouth of God. And we are seeking for that. As we eat this bread, may we understand who you are, what you did for us, and our path towards you. Thank you, Jesus, that you gave everything, all that somebody could give, your own life, so that we might live that we won't drink again until we drink it anew with you in heaven. Please help us to recommit ourselves wholeheartedly to loving you better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> We both bread and the wine, and I would like to ask you to save both the bread and the wine until everybody served, and in the end, we will eat and drink together. <coughs> we do have uh, gluten free bread. If you would like to have gluten free bread, just raise your hand and I will come to serve you.
came to church today and he said, I'm not going to take part in the communion because I have reasons. This is a time to change your mind and if you have not been served yet, but if you would like on the last minute to take part in the communion, please do raise your hand and you will come to serve you. Receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me.
Calvary's cross. He gave us an opportunity to live forever if we just believe in him. And so we're grateful for this ordinance, dear Lord, where we can remember what you did for us on the cross. Thank you so much for who you are. And now as we leave this place, may you cause your face to shine upon us. May you grant us a peace that passes all understanding and give us rest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm.